In 2002, a team of researchers started to survey the coastal waters of western Taiwan. They found that there was a population of pink dolphins living there, within only a few kilometers of the shore. Born dark grey, they become pink as they mature, with dark spots that gradually fade away. This species of dolphin also occurs near Hong Kong, Xiamen, and other coastal parts of China. But scientists believe that the pink dolphins of western Taiwan are resident there all year round and are isolated from other populations by the deeper waters down the middle of the Taiwan Strait. Dolphins from the Taiwan population have noticeably different spotting patterns, which suggests that they don't mate with dolphins from the other populations. The area in which they swim near Taiwan is long and narrow, stretching as much as 200 kilometers north and south along the coast, but only about 3 kilometers offshore. But although conditions here used to be suitable for them to thrive, humans have changed the west coast so drastically that it is no longer a dolphin-friendly environment. Taiwan's west coast is now also home to a dense human population and a vast array of industries which emit pollutants into the air and water every day. The west coast is now estimated to be more than 80% artificial, with rich natural habitats having been replaced with lifeless cement walls and other structures. Huge areas of reclaimed land are being built in order to make space for more factories. But these are filling in wetlands that are vital for wildlife and leaving less and less space for the dolphins. When fresh water mixes with salt water at the mouths of rivers, a dynamic environment abundant with life is created, providing food for the dolphins and also for people. But not only are we now poisoning this web of life, but this precious fresh water is now also being diverted away from the river mouths in order to feed even more factories and power plants planned for the west coast. Boats and fishing nets all along the coast many of which are illegal, also mean that there is a constant threat of collisions with dolphins or that the dolphins will get entangled in the nets and drown or suffer serious injuries. Dolphins depend on sound to communicate, hunt for food and avoid danger, but they are now subjected to underwater noise from construction, boats and many other sources, including even military firing in the estuaries along the coast. The combined impacts of all of these activities on the dolphins have reached unsustainable levels and they have now been listed as critically endangered. There's enough information to list it as critically endangered, which is just one step away from extinction. It's the worst status that any population can have. This means that the Taiwan pink dolphins are following the same path as the Baiji, a dolphin that used to swim in China's Yangtze River but was announced extinct in 2007. The sort of negative lesson we learned was that extinction uh, can happen really fast and when we're not paying as close attention as we should be. They're still here and there is still time. But if we don't reduce our impact on them quickly, they are likely to disappear from Taiwan's shores forever. After many petitions and protests by local conservation groups, the government has started to hold meetings to discuss the impacts of human activities on the dolphins. But conservation groups and concerned members of the public don't always get a warm welcome. Sometimes they aren't allowed into meetings. Other times they're simply not invited. If they do get into the building, they often still have to stay in another room to watch the meeting on a screen. 
and if they do get into the meeting room, they rarely get more than three minutes to speak before they are stopped. But despite all of these hurdles, for the sake of those who can't attend the meetings, it's vital that we keep trying. Now, yet more major construction is planned, including an enormous land reclamation project on which more petrochemical factories are to be built. This is to be located right in the middle of the stretch of waters in which the dolphins live. This will effectively block their movement between the north and south parts of their habitat, splitting this one tiny critically endangered population into two and pushing them even closer towards extinction. The developers claim that the dolphins will be able to swim through a narrow channel between the new block of artificial land and the coast. There is even talk of bringing in dolphin trainers to train the dolphins to use the channel. But a similar development project in Hong Kong appears to have driven pink dolphins away. According to local people, pink dolphins used to be seen along the coast where Hong Kong's new international airport now stands. Now, according to Dr. Samuel Hong, an expert on Hong Kong's pink dolphins, they don't even swim into the channel that was left between the airport and the coast. For some reason, dolphins just avoid to go to that narrow channel, which is about 500 meters wide. Would you suggest that training dolphins to go into the channel might be a solution? <laughs> no, I think this is absolutely impossible. The, the wild animals, they, they choose wherever they want to go. The health and survival of this small dolphin population are inextricably linked to the health of a vast proportion of Taiwan's west coast. But although they live within only a couple of kilometers of land, and can even be seen from the shore, the millions of people who live along the coast are only now gradually starting to realize that they are there. Can it be that within only a few years of finding them, we will have to watch them disappear before our very eyes. Or are we willing to take the chance, while it still exists, to learn how to share this habitat upon which they and millions of other wild animals also depend?